Hey guys, my name is Sanjay. Welcome to the Engineer Wannabe YouTube channel. Today we're going to be unboxing the second watch that I purchased last week. Uh, if you saw my live stream, uh, we kind of spoke about it there. Uh, but I have left it in its box in its entirety. It has been unsized and it's fresh unboxing and I'm really excited to get into it. It was really hard to, to leave it on my desk for a week. but. I managed <laughs> uh, on my wrist today wristwatch check is uh, the watch I purchased last week um, which is the Omega uh, Aquaterra the uh, shades terracotta yeah so moved a few pieces in my collection uh, traded a bunch and got these two watches but before we get started on the unboxing and chat I want you to let I want to let you know that you are infinitely valuable you really are a great price has been paid for you and I hope you know that um, all right guys so let's uh, let's let's do it okay so here it is here's that Aquaterra again been really thrilled with it um, so yeah that that part helped me with waiting a week uh, somewhat of delayed gratification I guess but interesting that Grand Seiko has changed a little bit of uh, what comes in the package so uh, you still get this uh, guarantee this uh, certification of the watch movements performance and how it's been tested and stuff like that uh, there's the warranty card and information in this little sleeve and uh, the box is no longer a box it's a watch pouch which is nice and interesting that this uh, washi paper still comes in it so you can lift it right out but look at that that is different i know grand seiko has been doing this for a while but this is my first experience with one of these pouches so a bit more functional than uh what it used to be you know the box usually stays on a shelf and in this watch roll watch pouch thing is a bit more functional more useful you can take it with you if you're traveling um, but i probably won't do that Okay, inside you got the usual um, oven mitt for cleaning your watch. And I think, yeah, there is another cleaning cloth. This one's a bit more plush feeling. Anyway, so here is the watch, uh, the, the big reveal. This is the Grand Seiko SBGW297. If you've been following me, you know that I've been kind of uh, uh, gaga about this watch for some time. I was a little torn because I had previously purchased the SBGW289, which is the uh, the Sakura pinkish dialed version of this small 34, sorry, 44 GS case. Way back near when I got into the hobby, I had this watch, the SBGY003. It was my favorite watch of all time. I actually own that for the most I've ever owned a watch, which is about three years, uh, which is incredible <laughs> for me at least. And um, it was just after a while, after those three years, for one, the price was really high on that watch. Uh, and uh, it was starting to get uh, a feel a little big and I was starting to trend towards smaller watches. And I preferred the 44 GS case. It's so strange. Uh, that Grand Seiko made this. This is literally the uh, the perfect watch that I wanted. I wanted the dial of the SBGY003, um, but in a 44 GS case. But then I wanted a 44 GS case, and I wanted a small 44 GS case. This is it. And there is next to no compromises. There is one compromise. There is next to no compromises because you still have that blued seconds hand um, that was really nice on the SBGY003 that beautiful uh, sunray pattern on that dial no see-through case back and it's not spring drive so that's one compromise uh, okay there are two compromises second compromise of course uh, for me personally would be those hands um, they are not Dauphine style hands and I I personally really like Dauphine hands not everyone does but for me Grand Seiko and Dauphine hands are uh in a way synonymous and uh you know this these hands are okay i've i've grown to like them but they aren't dauphine hands unfortunately so i was really thrilled when they announced this watch and i tried to 
I tried to hold on to the SVGW289, but after a while of, of thinking about it, especially during my hiatus, I realized, you know, that's a bit insane to have the same watch twice. Um, I mean, if that's what floats your boat, then, then so be it. But I figured um, I really shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, so I sold the or traded the SBGW289 along with a few other pieces to get the, these two watches last week. And I couldn't be happier. I think the fact that this was this already in a sense feels like my own watch. So it was pretty easy in a sense. It was easier to leave it in the box for the week. And really focus on the the Alcaterra there uh, because this feels like a, a watch that was mine it's just coming back home kind of thing and I'm I'm really thrilled and I think uh, yeah I have no regrets at least so far uh, for moving on from the 289 although that 289 was a really special piece as well um, I think this one is just a bit more me and a bit more special to me so yeah, guys, that's it. This is the uh, Grand Seiko SBGW297. Quick uh, spec runoff, I think, 18 millimeter lugs. Uh, this is a 36.5 millimeter 44 GS style case. I can't quite remember how thick it is. I think it's about 11, uh, maybe 12 millimeters thick. And I'm looking forward to sizing this, putting it on my wrist, um, and uh, really making a few more memories <laughs> with it. <laughs> Uh, I shouldn't say I don't plan to move on from it, but I really don't plan to move on from this guy. Well, guys, let me know what you think. Uh, that's it for this unboxing and the short story time. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. Remember, you're infinitely valuable. You're precious. You're worth it. And I appreciate you. Take care, everyone. See you in the next video. Bye.